Today we tend to take it for granted living indoors at a comfortable, even temperature. In winter especially, central heating has really changed our lives quite dramatically. Without it, people had to spend hours carting coal about, lighting fires, keeping fires going, and they still had to wear masses of clothes indoors. But to make a heating system that's completely automatic and reliable has taken an enormous amount of effort and ingenuity. I hope to tell you something about how these systems evolved and how they work in this programme. Even lighting a simple fire isn't at all easy without modern gadgets like lighters or matches. One of the most effective methods used in many parts of the world is the bow drill. It's much better than the Boy Scout method of rubbing sticks together. But even this requires a lot of skill and practice, and I haven't managed to make it work myself, despite spending a whole afternoon playing with it. Even speeding up the rotation with an electric drill... The friction is creating a hot, powdery charcoal, which in theory can make a bit of tinder catch light. This looks much more hopeful, but I've never actually managed to get a flame out of it, despite trying all sorts of different types of tinder. Well, the ancient civilizations, including the Romans, very sensibly never let their fires go out if they could possibly help it. At first, the Romans simply had a fire in the middle of their living room. The Latin for hearth is focus. The fire was literally the focus of the room. But they probably had trouble with smoke, as the Latin for living room is atrium, from atta meaning black. So they started putting the fire outside in a furnace with cavities under the floors and in the walls. But the Romans were rather decadent and just as they were getting comfortable, their civilization declined and fell. And houses once again became very smoky. The next attempt to improve matters was made by the Normans. They made holes in their castle walls and tried to funnel the smoke out sideways. Here we've built a horizontal chimney, and you can see it doesn't really work very well. gases from a fire naturally rise and so to make a chimney draw it really has to point upwards. The Normans finally realized this in the 13th century when castles started to incorporate true chimneys. By the 18th century chimneys were regarded as indispensable in Britain and hardly any buildings were put up without them. Even Chiswick House, which was intended to be an exact replica of an Italian design by Palladio. At the last minute, the design was modified to include four large chimneys on each side. Lord Burlington had the house built after returning from the grand tour of Europe fired with an enthusiasm for Palladian architecture. But he obviously felt that comfort was more important than aesthetics. Although well-designed open fires made houses almost comfortable, this sort of heat was totally unsuitable for the tropical greenhouses that came into fashion in the 18th century. An even heat was required for the plants that was totally smoke-free. At first, the Roman system of central heating was revived. The only remains are these cast-iron chimneys disguised as urns. Fires were lit behind the greenhouse and the smoke was drawn up through cavities in the wall. The wall became hot and this created the warmth the plants needed. The 18th century was also the start of the Industrial Revolution and steam power was really the miracle of the age. So all the fires behind the walls were soon replaced by a central boiler. 
and uh, steam or hot water was fed through these enormous pipes that acted as radiators. And in fact, these systems are remarkably similar to the modern domestic central heating systems. These pipes take up much more space than today's small bore pipes and ultra-thin radiators, but the principle is really exactly the same. This is a steam-powered clock I made for a health food shop a few years ago. The positions of the weights show the time, and every hour they're wound up by a steam-powered piston. It taught me a lot about the problems of using steam. One of the worst is scale. The high temperatures tend to increase the effect, and even using a water softener, scale causes all sorts of difficulties. For a start, it's very difficult to regulate. On this valve, for instance, it's a very, very slight adjustment between it not providing enough steam so the piston doesn't work at all and providing too much so it whizzes up and down at an alarming rate. It's all time, so the winding finishes exactly on the hour and the whistle blows. Steam heating remained popular in America for large buildings, but hot water systems have far fewer problems and quickly replace steam for domestic use. Commercial exploitation of central heating for private houses didn't really start until the 1920s. At first, it was only installed in luxury houses. But it quickly spread to the mass market, first being incorporated on a wide scale in the new suburban housing estates of the 1930s. Since then, many different types of central heating system have been developed, but the hot water and radiator type has remained the most common, and it's this that I'm going to concentrate on in this program. It's basically very simple. Water is heated in a boiler by a fire and the exhaust gases go up the chimney. The hot water is pumped through a series of radiators and eventually returns to the boiler to be reheated again. The pipes round the boiler do look a bit complicated. There's one pipe to a tank in the roof to fill the system with water. There's also a vent pipe which lets the water inside expand as it heats up and lets water and steam out in case it boils. Here we've deliberately overheated this system and the steam harmlessly comes out of the vent, while fresh water comes in through the feed pipe to stop the boiler boiling dry. Of course, this doesn't normally happen and the boiler is actually rather inaccurately named as the water is never intended to boil. Most boilers also provide the hot water for the house and this creates even more pipes that we've left out on this model. <laughs> 